Okay, everybody, welcome to another Ignite Visibility University podcast video edition. This is going to be great. I am so excited today because we have the Microsoft team here with us, specifically Tess Milligan, Senior Account Executive, Microsoft Advertising. We also have Lance Wilson, Senior Account Executive, MSAN, Microsoft Advertising. You can see them on the side screen. Guys and girls, can you give a little wave to uh, our audience over there so we can see you? How are you doing today, Tess? Good. It's Friday, so it's a great day. Friday. Lance, how about you? Rocking and rolling over here. We're really, really excited to have you here. And Tess, kind of in general, what are you going to be talking about in your section today? So I'm going to talk about some of the new and exciting things that are coming out and that have come out in the last year or so at Microsoft Advertising. And I'm going to go over a little bit of kind of how we're positioned in the marketplace right now. And then I'm going to let, let my colleague Lance talk about some even cooler features that we've launched recently um, and how business owners and advertisers can take advantage of them. So exciting. Everybody, listeners, Ignite Visibility listeners, this is a firsthand look at new data coming out from Microsoft, industry data, paid media, advertising, economic data. In addition to that, we are getting a firsthand look at the LinkedIn, Microsoft, integration and how that's going to work for you. Super exciting. And, and Lance, in your section, anything specific that you want to call out that you're going to be speaking about that Tess didn't mention? Yeah, so we're going to be talking about the Microsoft Audience Network. This is an audience network that Microsoft launched a couple of years ago in beta, and now it's available to everybody. So we really want to talk through the features, how it works, the performance, everything, so we can get excited, people excited about it. This audience network, everybody has been, you know, a long time in the making, B2B, targeting the specific people you want in LinkedIn. And I am so uh, honored to have both of you here talking to us about it, getting in front of our group of marketers and up and coming marketers. So everybody, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. We've got about a 30 to 40 minute presentation here on all the data. Then we're going to get into all of the Microsoft advertising and LinkedIn advertising. That's going to be kind of towards the end. And then I've got the top three questions for each of these sections that I'm going to be asking. So make sure to stay around for the entire thing. This is going to be a lot of fun. You're going to leave with a ton of value. Tess, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Walk us through some of the new data that we have uh, for our marketers out there. Thanks, John. Um, so... Here's our intros again. Once again, my name is Tess Milligan. I am an account executive here at Microsoft. And I've been with the company for about five and a half years now. For those of you who were following back in 2015, we changed our partnership with Yahoo and started servicing advertisers back in 2015. We sort of took that back into Microsoft advertising. Um, and while we still do have a partnership with them, it has evolved over the years and our network and our share in the marketplace really has grown since the time that I joined the company back in 2015. You can see a few of the stats here. In the US, our global search share was about 30 31%. And now in 2020, we're sitting at about 37% in the US. And you can kind of see how we've expanded internationally and grown our, our presence in some of the international European, um, Australian, Canadian marketplaces as well. So I've seen a lot of growth and a lot of change over the last five years, but it's been really exciting to see some of the things that um, have kind of come out of that time and some of the things that we're going to talk about today. One of the things that I think people may not think about when they think about Microsoft advertising is that our platform is more than just searches on bing.com. And while that is a really big part of, of what we do, we also have a pretty extensive partnership with various entities um, across different media platforms. Um, you know, I mentioned the partnership that we have with Yahoo, which still continues today, um, AOL. Um, and then of course we have all of our, what we call owned and operated properties. So Edge, Windows, Skype, MSN, Cortana, 
Outlook, all of those um, properties that people would do searches on fall under our sort of umbrella of Microsoft properties. And then we have um, third-party search partners, um, like some of the ones that you may have heard of, DuckDuckGo. Um, Ecosia is a really cool one. They plant trees when you do searches. Forbes, um, WebMD, CBS Interactive, all of um, some of the bigger names of, of partners that use our data and that people can, can get traffic from and advertise on. And all of that happens across our platform. Of course, these are just a few of the examples we have thousands of, of search partners. And that really has helped us to expand um, beyond just our own um, owned and operated properties. So Tess, just to clarify, yeah. so if somebody does yeah. a search on the Wall Street Journal, that's being powered by Bing and the Bing exactly. ads that are served in there are from that network. So everybody who's listening, if you would like to advertise in the Wall Street Journal search engine, this is how you do it. Is that correct? You nailed it. And then the other thing that I think is another sort of misconception about um, our network and who makes up our network, who does searches um, and what types of searches are they doing? Um, we actually over index, meaning we go beyond what our overall search share is in certain key verticals. So, you know, I mentioned the 37% market share on desktop. Uh, back on the first slide that I that I went through, but in certain verticals like business, finance, health, um, telecom, automotive, certain verticals um, that many of you may even own businesses in, um, we actually over-index on those verticals and have an even bigger audience for those particular types of searches than what we do um, just across our entire network and all of the, the searches that people do. So I think that's one of the misconceptions that I always like to, to kind of throw out there that people are surprised about. One of the other things that I think is important to note, we are right now in a very, very interesting, weird, crazy year, as I'm sure most of you know. And we, we wanted to take a look at, you know, what happened during some of the other sort of big events like the financial crisis of 2008, um, the dot-com bust, um, all of those sort of, you know, times when the market kind of really crashed due to, ex you know, circumstances um, that were going on in the economy. And um, during the last sort of financial crisis, Consumers actually, they thought they would spend about 29% less during the holidays um, back in 2008, but in reality, retail sales only dropped about 4.7%. Um, so um, we actually anticipate having a fairly healthy, you know, holiday retail season this year, despite the sort of um, hand that we've been dealt in 2020. And some of the areas that you're going to see that increase and change year over year, food and beverage um, is a big one. Obviously, people have been doing a lot of, um, you know, grocery shopping and um, sort of, you know, pickup and delivery of, of food. So that one has grown really kind of massively. Um, health, um, beauty, personal care is another vertical um, or area where we expect to see a lot of growth this year office equipment and supplies as people are now working from home, they need to set up their home offices. Um, so you can kind of see these are some of the, the areas where, you know, if you're a business owner in one of these particular key verticals, um, definitely pay attention to uh, the growth that we expect to see this year. And then I think one of the other things that's important to note as well in some of the other trends that we're seeing you know, we've seen this sort of growth in higher search volume in certain verticals um, due to COVID, but we've also seen with that a reduction in CPCs just because of people dropping out of the marketplace. Um, this only goes through June, but I know that some of that has kind of started to pick back up again, just as the holidays kind of, you know, have come about and more things are opened up now. Um, but we have seen our desktop and tablet volume continue to grow this year um, because people are working from home and using their, their laptops uh, to do searches. So that's another interesting kind of theme that we've had come out of this year.
test. That was a key takeaway from a recent study that we did. We saw a, a resurgence of desktop and tablet and more people buying on that when everything was going mobile. So it's a really interesting shift you're calling out. Yep. And it's one of the things that we at Microsoft Advertising do really well. So it's exciting for us um, on that front. Very cool. So one of the things that John brought up in the beginning um, was our exciting integration with LinkedIn. And um, some of you may know that a few years ago, uh, Microsoft acquired LinkedIn. And the very first thing that everyone on our team wanted to know was how is this going to impact advertising? You know, a lot of people run ads on LinkedIn and do that quite successfully. They have their own ad platform. But what we are able to do with our LinkedIn integration is we are able to target based on LinkedIn profiles. So now within your search campaigns, you can do this today, you can go and bid boost on audiences that you may be targeting. So a lot of sort of B2B advertisers are really taking advantage of this because they're able to say, okay, I know that I need to target certain companies, certain industries or job functions that are important to my business. And so they can go in and not only, you know, layer those audiences in, um, but you can also bid boost. So if you, if you say, you know, somebody is searching for a desk chair is going to be, you know, more in the market to buy that, you can go in and um, actually increase your bids. You can say, I'm willing to pay, you know, 20% more for people who fall under that particular LinkedIn audience. So this is something that is unique to us. Nobody else has this integration. And so it's, it's really exciting for us to be able to offer this as a unique um, part of our, our platform. Do you mind if I ask you one question on that? So if somebody is searching for digital marketing agency, for example, I can target all the profiles that have searched for that on LinkedIn. Is that correct? Not exactly. Um, you can target people based on those three categories that I mentioned. So company. So if you have um, a list of companies that you think, you know, you want to target because they're either in market to buy your product or service, or um, they may be looking for an advertising agency. Um, you can actually give us that list and then we can upload it um, into our, into our system. Same goes with, um, you know, if you're trying, if you're looking for targeting CMOs, so you could target people based on like, if they have marketing in their, in their profile. And one of the things that we've kind of seen out of the initial LinkedIn pilot, it's now out of pilot, so everyone has access to it. We saw um, that ads shown using LinkedIn profile targeting had a 16% increase in CTR, um, then same ads shown to non-audience targeted users. So it helps to increase your click-through rate and even better saw a 64% increase in conversion rate. And that's, you know, at the end of the day, what, what most people care about. And as I mentioned, um, we have over 80,000 companies um, that are available to target. So chances are um, there are probably some of the companies that, that you want to do business with who are in our list. Um, I've given a few examples here, but like I said, if you have companies that you want to target specifically, definitely reach out to us and, and we can help to, to integrate those. And then industry and job function. So maybe you're wanting to target um, hospitality because you sell tablecloths and you're looking for um, people who work in that industry to buy your product, you can do that. Same goes with the job function aspect, um, marketing, finance, um, engineering, research, operations. So those are some of the sort of job functions that you're able to target by as well. So it really does give you kind of a wide breadth of ways to target um, based on people's profiles. And that is sort of the end of how you can use LinkedIn um, to target via search. But I am actually going to hand it off to my colleague Lance to talk about some other ways that you can um, use LinkedIn 
and some of the other audiences that we're able to target um, through the Microsoft Audience Network. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Like Tess, I actually started here at Microsoft in 2015. I started as an account manager uh, on our search business. And about a year ago, I moved over to uh, specifically the Microsoft Audience Network. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is our audience network as it's relatively new and it's a new way to uh, get inventory through my Microsoft advertising for native ads. And so we'll go ahead and dig right in to what the audience network is. So the Microsoft audience network are premium placements that we have on outlook.com, Microsoft Edge, MSN, and then our premium publishers. Our premium publishers actually make up about half of our network that we have. And all of these are brand safe experiences. We just signed a deal with Integral Ad Sciences, IAS, uh, to help with our brand safety. And so we know that we are showing our ads only in brand safe experiences. And then we also allow our advertisers control for the domains that they're showing on. So you can actually produce a publisher report within the UI and exclude any domains or URLs that you would want to based on performance or maybe somewhere that you didn't wanna show your ads. All of our placements on the audience network, they're all highly contextual. Um, we use our Microsoft first party data that's only available through the Microsoft advertising UI to target our users. And that's how we're targeting our users is by the data that we have to make sure that we're targeting them with the right ad at the right time. And all of this is leading to really good performance that we've seen through time as our platform gets better, as our technology gets smarter, advertisers time and time again are seeing really good performance on our network. So the size of our network, we have uh, 242 million unique monthly visitors uh, uh, in, our, in our whole network. And we're using our 10 billion data signals that we have that are cross screen signals to target our users. And the way to access this are the, are the different app placements that you can use on our network uh, are product ads. So if you had a feed, um, especially for uh, those of you that have retail clients that have feeds, you're able to actually use uh, that feed to then produce product ads on our network. There's also text ads. So the text ads are run actually through Outlook um, through mobile and desktop. So that's how uh, our text ads are shown. And then there's the, the larger inventory, which is our image-based ads uh, that are on our network. So three different ad formats that we have on the network. And like I mentioned, we have 10 billion different cross-screen data signals that we're using to target our users. And this is what's known as the Microsoft advertising graph. And all of this data, like I said, is first party data that you can only access through the audience, the Microsoft Audience Network. We have a billion devices running on Windows 10. We get information from uh, Bing from its searches. We also have what is unique to us, LinkedIn data that you're able to target. And I know Tess spoke a lot about that LinkedIn data and you have that same ability to use those LinkedIn audiences and target them uh, on our network. And so this works really well for your B2B clients, for software these type of things. We use all these data points and this is how the Microsoft Graph is targeting our users. And you have all of these features to target your consumers uh, for your business. I think, you know, just to, for a moment, because I feel like a lot of people might look at that graph and they might be watching this or listening to this and they might think, where do I start? So, you know, in a lot of ad platforms, there's kind of the low hanging fruit and it expands from there. Do you generally recommend they start in search and, and kind of go into the audience network areas or what's your thoughts on that? So typically you would have your search campaigns probably already running with, with your business. Um, but this is kind of a different approach with the audience network to get on uh, native ads. So our, our native placements that we have that are typical or, or or similar to display, even though they are native formats. And so typically what users do is this is just an expansion from search. So they would they would have their search campaigns and then these campaigns within the UI itself uh, would be audience specific campaigns. Um, so they'd be uh, audience campaigns as you create your campaigns. And those campaigns are not keyword driven, but they're actually audience list driven. So you would select your type of audience that you wanna target and then that's how uh, your ads would be shown on, like I said, MSN, Outlook, and Edge, and then our premium publishers. Um, so you would have to upload the ad yourself, 
into the campaigns and then we'd use those ads to then target based on the audiences that you selected. And so those targeting options that you have uh, to target uh, on our network are your remarketing lists. So these are your own generated remarketing lists that you would have uh, if you had uh, the Bing UET pixel on your site. You could use those lists to target users. And usually the remarketing lists are uh, or better performing from like a ROAS perspective from a last click. Now, if you're looking to do more awareness campaigns and prospecting campaigns and you have the budgets for it, then you wanna do the our in-market audiences targeting. Our in-market audiences, we have, you know, I think around 170 different in-market audiences that you can use to target. And this would, these, these range from, you know, autos to home, home and decor to apparel, the range is large and you can see all of these. And these are all the same audiences that you could use um, in search as well. But you would select these audiences to get that awareness in those type of verticals um, that you care about. Uh, custom audiences is also something that would be generated from the advertiser as well. And then there's the option to do product audiences or dynamic remarketing. And this could be done if you have fee-based uh, retail clients, you would be able to use these dynamic remarketing lists um, if you if you had uh, those feeds and the correct pixel set up. And, and I'll just stop briefly around the dynamic remarketing and say that it's our most effective uh, targeting that we have. Uh, from a ROAS perspective, uh, last click, advertisers are seeing incredible performance. Um, and I know we're up on holiday right now and it might be a little late to uh, get pixels and things added, um, but being able to do shopping um, through the audience network is really effective and really, really easy to do because we're just using your feed um, to then produce ads. Uh, then you can build on uh, to your marketing and other lists through similar audiences, which are based off of your marketing. Um, and then we have customer match and then custom combinations. And then, like I mentioned, the LinkedIn profile targeting that you're able to do. And like Tess mentioned, that would be company, industry and job function uh, that you could target. And we see really good performance for LinkedIn targeting as, as well. It is our most expensive targeting, but but that's because it's our most targeted targeting. It's We, we have a lot of data on that and it's really rich data. Um, but those are your targeting opportunities that you have on the audience network to once again, get consumers that are, um, that are on uh, Outlook and MSN and other publishers that we have. Moving on here, uh, I just wanted to show quickly what the, the ads look like and, and kind of the ability that you have to control the ads on the network. So this is uh, actually a screenshot, what it would look like within the UI itself. So within the UI, we only require that you need to have one image asset to add to your campaigns. So you would create a campaign, an audience campaign, and then you would add one image. That image size needs to be the 1200 by 628. Uh, you could you could reach out or you could you could check online to see what exactly what that size is to to um, uh, get get final results on it. But once you have that one size, you can add it to the UI, and then we actually crop it and repurpose it for eight different other placements that are on our network. And for each one of those placements, you get an ad preview of what that ad would look like with the text as well. So you can see the text over in the ad preview with the image. And if you don't like how that image was recropped, you can recrop it yourself or you can replace it yourself. So a lot of flexibility and a lot of ability to actually adjust and change the ads that you want. Once again, I wanna call it, it's really easy because you only need to add one image and then you can you have access to those other eight placements like I mentioned. We do suggest adding more than one image. We suggest about four per ad group just to ensure uh, that is this the best way to get the best performance out of the network by using multiple images and then also by changing the images frequently and testing ad copy, just like you would in search where you would, you know, you're testing ad copy, you're changing it up. You wanna do the same thing with your images within the audience network. So these are would be your uh, image-based ads. Now, the performance that we're seeing on this network is really good because there are other ways that you could access MSN inventory with uh, uh, other publishers. But from what we've seen, because of the Microsoft graph, because of the Microsoft data that's unique to us, we're seeing better performance on MSN InfoPane. For example, we're seeing a 2x greater click-through rate than our competitors. And then Outlook, it's a 1.2x greater click-through rate. And then for a premium publisher, it's even gr greater, which is a 3.5x um, greater click-through rate, which is really, really awesome um, and just really proves the value of the audience network and the targeting capabilities that we have and the data that we have access to as Microsoft. 
Now, for a lot of you search clients out there, uh, you might be wondering, you know, well, this is going to, it's going to perform a little bit like display. Maybe the ROAS isn't going to be as good because it, it you know, you're not going to see that last click performance like you would in search. Well, we've done a lot of analysis on what we call like uh, the, the search impact, I should say. So like the incrementality that you could see by running on audience campaigns through Microsoft and how it is impacting your search. So we've done analysis for the last year or so through with multiple different advertisers um, specifically, and we've kind of lumped them together into the verticals that we that you see here, and we've seen really good performance. So as we've looked at these tests, what we're looking at is we're looking at exposure. So a user who saw an MSAN ad or who was um, given an MSAN ad but didn't click, and then what their search activity looked like after versus somebody who didn't see an ad at all and what their search activity looked like afterwards. So if we take it for example, retail, which is our best performing vertical in the audience network. Um, you can see that post exposure, there was an 80% lift in clicks for users who saw an MSN ad. It's in a 62% lift in impressions. So really good performance. It's something that's gonna really add value to your search campaigns, as well as, as driving that awareness, driving that um, incrementality to your business. So just some really good performance numbers that we've seen on the audience network. Uh, that's all I had today. Um, but really, if, if, if you have interest in running on it, uh, there's a lot of information that we have online. And also if you have any account managers or any, any support there, you reach out to them as well. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to be had and we're really excited about where uh, the Microsoft Finance Network is going to go. Awesome. Thank you so much for going through all that, Lance. I, I really appreciate it. We do have some questions from our audience. And just so everybody knows who's listening and watching, um, we do run all these ads for our clients here at Ignite. And this is our account team who helps us run all these ads. So we get to lean on Tess and Lance and all their expertise. And that's why we're really excited to be bringing all this to you today. M much of this is, is very new and innovative. Some of it's been around for a little while. I'll just take a moment and just say, I love the audience targeting. It's highly effective. You know, it's, it's, and, and I believe, you know, the, the new keyword, and in fact, better than keywords, you know, buckets of, of highly targeted audiences. Let me ask you, Tess, do you feel like audiences are going to be the future of advertising and will they start to replace the keyword more and more? Great question. Um, it's certainly something that, you know, we are heavily invested in, um, hence our Microsoft audience network um, and a totally new way to, to target based on that. But uh, I don't see the keyword going away just yet. However, I would say um, definitely make sure that you have an audience um, strategy in place and that you know who your audience is and who you want to target. And even if you're not going to go in and, you know, dedicate specific budget to an audience at the bare minimum you should be layering them onto your campaigns so that you can collect the data so that you know who your audience is and who is interacting with your ads i think that's another really important thing that some people don't think about awesome thanks for going into that and and you know one of the things i wanted to also touch on a question for you lance so remarketing for me is key and in our own advertising and working with clients, sometimes as long as I can get a, a targeted first click on a subject, the remarketing and hitting people with a, a longer frequency uh, pays dividends, you know, as far as, um, as far as leads go, conversions go. Talk to us, do you feel like remarketing should be a part of every advertiser strategy? And then talk to us just a little bit more about the dynamic remarketing and the ins and outs of that, if you don't mind. For sure, yeah, totally agree. Whenever we suggest or or launch with an advertiser with audience on the audience network, number one is to get the remarketing lists on and going because they do perform the best um, because you are re-engaging uh, with those consumers that's interacted with your site. There's obviously a lot of different strategies to approach them, whether that's through different um, assets, different copy that you wanna use specifically for remarketing. So suggest that if you have the resources to do it. But you know, there's there's everything else that goes along with it, with budgeting, with bids, and how you want to just approach that remarketing list in general, um, so you can get that specific performance for that list. And that's definitely our number one suggestion when launching out the gate. 
Now, when talking about dynamic remarketing, uh, dynamic remarketing is extremely powerful. Um, once again, right now, it's only for retailers who have feeds, but we are expanding out in next year to other verticals that also use feeds. So think about like your real estate clients, your autos who actually use feeds as well in a different way, um, but we're going to be able to use that as well for dynamic remarketing. Um, and, and once again, that, that's that's going to be expansive to other ones other than uh, real estate and autos. I just call those ones out because those are the other large um, verticals that use feeds. Uh, but how it works is you actually have to add uh, a snippet to our UET or it's our Bing UET code um, pixel to your site. And then we're going to be able to track product IDs from that pixel from your site. So we'll be tracking the product ideas, IDs and then we track the page types. So that's your product viewers, that's your product searchers, your card abandoners, your purchasers, and then your general visitors. And with that code, we get all of that awesome data and then we can uh, remarket someone who's interacted with um, those ads, or sorry, those ads, those products, or who have abandoned cart, and then we're going to show them those exact products. Um, and we've seen, I, I can't, there's countless advertisers, retail advertisers that are seeing better performance through dynamic remarketing than they do on search for shopping. So we're just seeing incredible performance. And so I can't recommend it enough. It does take a little bit extra work to add that code, but once you do it, it's going to be really effective. And I like to say the juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> yeah, good one. So, you know, kind of going back to just one or two more questions, important ones, the LinkedIn profile targeting. Now that's been out for some people, but it was kind of in beta. Tess, is that out now to everybody? Is, do people need to wait? What about rollouts, getting started? What does that look like that people need to know? All you need to do is add them into your campaigns now. Um, we released it out of beta, I believe it was last month or the month before, so sometime this fall. Um, so very recently out of beta. Um, but yes, it is available to anyone who wants to use it. Now, the thing that I want to make sure that people understand as well, and I may have talked about this a little bit, but I wanna kind of clarify. So within your search campaigns, the LinkedIn profile target is only a bid modifier. So you can mm. gather the data, you can layer on the audience, you can bid up or down based on you know the relevancy of that particular LinkedIn profile target, um, but you can't exclusively target people um, through search. However, you can do that through the audience, the Microsoft audience network campaigns that Lance talked about. You can exclusively target those audiences through LinkedIn. Got it. LinkedIn. That's a really important point. So what yep. you're saying is inside a search, it's a bid modifier in the audience campaigns you're targeting. And, and just for everybody who doesn't know what a bid modifier is, do you mind explaining it just for anybody who's new to that world? Sure. Yeah. Um, so a bid modifier means that um, if you, John, say, I want to target people who work at Microsoft based on their LinkedIn profile, and I am willing to pay 20% more than what my bid is for that particular customer, because I know that they're in market for my product or service. So I'm going to go and I'm going to increase the bid by 20%. Um, so it's basically just adding on at a percentage level, 10, 20, 30%, whatever you think it's worth to that particular audience. Awesome. Thanks for going into that. I know that some of our newer marketers will love hearing that. So in wrapping up today, I'd like to ask both of you one more question. If you were a business owner, and you were going to set up a robust strategy using this network, what would be the main things? And I ask you this just to kind of reiterate, what are the main takeaways from you today that people should be looking at here, kind of low hanging fruit going into um, 2021? And, and Tess, and if you want to go ahead and start and then pass it over to Lance, that'd be great. Sure. So I would, I think the the kind of theme of, of the, the session is know your audience and target them with intentionality. Go in at a very bare minimum and at least start gathering the data for those audiences um, so that you can go in and really know that in addition to the keywords that you're targeting, you are targeting people that are in market for your product and service. There's no reason why um, anyone should have campaigns that don't have audiences layered in. Um, that's something that we kind of 
preach um, to all of our clients, like make sure at a very bare minimum that you are setting up those audiences to start gathering data. And then you can go back and, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks later, look at how that audience is performing and bid adjust accordingly. So that is one thing that I think is super, super important. And another kind of, I guess, pro tip and um, something to keep in mind starting next week. So the week of November 9th, we are going to have Black Friday and Cyber Monday related in market audiences available for people to target wow. for the holidays. So that's a, a little kind of pro tip that you can reach out to your agency or your account team about, but that is something super exciting that we have coming out this year. That is exciting. And I, I would just say, I have all these audiences actually set up for us at, at Ignite. And I feel like if you're not leaving, if you're not being deliberate with audiences and you're not in the Microsoft advertising network, then you're missing out on a good chunk. And it should be some notable percentage allocation of your budget and not just in some of these other networks that are out there. Um, you can see there's a ton of value here and a lot more coming in every single day. Lance, um, I'd like to ask you, final points. What, what would you like to leave listeners with? What do you want them to know? What would you want to know? Yeah, for sure. Um, I know we talked a little bit about the remarketing. So if I'm a business owner, what do I want to do? Definitely you want to target and remarket that way. But, you know, you can only remarket to people who have been to your site. So if you need to grow your business, if you need to get that awareness and expand, you really need to expand um, through those in-market audiences and other avenues like LinkedIn. Um, you might have some of those smaller budgets, but that is what we call to fill your funnel. You need to fill your funnel. Um, and that's how you're going to do it is through the audience targeting and through those expansions in your in-market audience verticals. And then LinkedIn. LinkedIn works really good for those software companies, those B2B companies. Mm -hmm. um, works really, really well when you're going to target, you know, your HR professionals or your real estate um, agents, et cetera. Whatever it is you're trying to do, LinkedIn can be very effective for that. Um, and so don't forget, you got to fill your funnel. You got to grow your business. Um, you can't just target people that have already been to you. You need to expand. You need to grow um, and to be successful. And and to do that, uh, you know, the in-market audiences, those awareness, those prospecting campaigns are crucial. Um, and, and you know, having the right copy, the right assets for it are all crucial crucial as well. Um, but yeah, so that's that's my two cents on it. Really well said. And everybody, you know, I always recommend you pick a percentage of revenue, you keep it consistent, and you continue to reinvest that into your marketing to drive future growth. And Lance is telling you the same thing. Lance and Tess, that was awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. We all really appreciate it. Have a great day, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, John. Thank you. Bye.